Today, I want to go through the top 10 most asked Grim Dawn questions. These are questions I see in my Twitch chat, Steam forums, Reddit, etc. I hope this can help some newer players out and maybe some not so new players as well. Do note there are probably going to be a few spoilers in here. If you just got the game, just play through the game raw and have a good time. Then after a base game playthrough, maybe come back and seek some answers. There will be timestamps below or somewhere if you need to skip around. Enjoy. Question number one, do I need the expansions or is the base game good enough? I'd say if you have the base game, go ahead and play through it a little bit. If you're enjoying yourself, then pick up the two expansions, Ashes of Malmoth and Forgotten Gods. They offer two massive new parts of the game to explore, 15 additional levels, more items, more dungeons, and of course three additional classes, the Inquisitor, the Necromancer, and the Oathkeeper, plus a bunch of other stuff. If you don't have the game at all, I would say purchasing the Definitive Edition is a solid move, especially considering this game goes on sale quite often. If you like action RPGs, I reckon you'll enjoy Grim Dawn quite a bit. What about the Crucible DLC? Do I need that? You don't really need this. It does not add anything to the base game. It is like a side mini horde mode game, which these days is exclusively used for build testing, it seems. However, you can get drops here, and the devs might be buffing Crucible drops in a future patch, but right now, there are better ways to get loot. In summation, just buy it or wait for a sale. It's a good game. Question number two, what is the best class to start with? There really is no right or wrong answer here, and I'd advise as a first playthrough, just do whatever and have fun. But if you are looking for a good starter class, you can never go wrong with the soldier class. There are many good items that support soldier, obtainable while leveling and in early game, and you can pair the soldier with anything. It's a fantastic class itself and a great support class as well. When you're ready to select a second class, pairing Soldier with Necromancer or Arcanist is nice because of the farmable endgame set known as the Krieg set. This set is fairly easy to acquire and is also farmable on elite difficulty, which makes it great for beginners. If this Krieg set interests you but you are not enjoying the Soldier playstyle, you can pair Necromancer with Arcanist, which is a spellbinder, and also benefit from this Krieg set. If you aren't digging any of the previous combos mentioned, the Soldier and Oathkeeper combo, which is a Warlord, is a terrific class combo starting out. These two classes have extremely good synergies, and there are plenty of helpful guides out there for the Warlord class. I'll leave a few links to beginner guides in the description below. In summation, when in doubt, Soldier out. Question number three, where do I put my attribute points? You can never go wrong with putting points in physique while you're leveling or doing a first playthrough. This gives health and defensive ability mainly, and will also allow for easy armor equipping as you progress. I advise newer players to keep 5 to maybe 8 points available just in case an item drops that has either spirit or cunning requirements that they do not meet to equip said item. Be advised that your mastery bar will also offer attribute points that are in line with your mastery type. For example, soldiers get a lot of physique from this bar offering health and defense. Arcanists will get more spirit from their main bar, allowing for more magic damage, and so on and so forth. At the end of the day, these attribute points can be reset with a tonic of clarity acquired while completing the story of the game. Number four, where do I find builds and other game info? The forums. The forum is the best location for updated builds, posts which get updated every patch by Grim Dawn fans, starter guides, game guides, mods, etc. In conjunction with the forums, you'll most likely get linked to GrimTools.com, which is the go-to item database, map database, and of course, theory crafting and build calculator website. This is the same creator of the last Epoch tools, uh, by the way, if you're a fan of that game. Avoid the Grim Dawn wikis regarding items. Just use GrimTools.com for this type of info. The Grim Dawn wiki page just isn't as up to date for item info, but can be used as a helpful reference for some things like quests, bounties, or even lore if you're into that sort of thing. Do your best to avoid random bloggy looking websites and article posts about Grim Dawn builds. They're extremely hit or miss or outdated or written by people who are not experienced. Start in the forums and go from there. Lastly, if you find a build guide that you like, just know in many cases, end game builds are almost never the same as a leveling build. So you shouldn't use an end game build guide for leveling a character. Many build guides have another link on how to level a character somewhere, usually. In summation, the forums are a trove of helpful information. Also grimtools.com. Question number five. At what level should I go to elite and ultimate difficulty? Why am I laughing? On your first playthrough, I wouldn't sweat this too much. Just play through normal, screw around, and have fun. But let's say you don't like your class, you want to restart, or you just want to be a bit more streamlined. Do Act 1 on normal by killing Warden Krieg. This will unlock this NPC here in any outpost. I would suggest doing this quest, which introduces you to the Forgotten Gods part of the game. This starter quest makes you choose a faction in the Conclave of the Three, 
Once you choose a faction as part of this quest, you'll be friendly with the faction and can purchase early game movement abilities from the faction vendors. These can be applied to your metal and bound to a button so you can get around a little bit quicker. It will also add these three factions to your faction list. I usually go with Dreeg or Bismil Cult because they offer better movement skills in my opinion. Then, after you've done this quest, head back to Devil's Crossing and continue in the base game until you get to Longorian. This will unlock Elite difficulty as well as the quest and Fort Icon from Inquisitor Creed to continue north of Burwich Estates up to the Malmoth area. This unlocks the Malmoth content. You'll end up playing through about two-thirds of the Malmoth content before getting to an area called the Malmoth Sewers, and you receive a quest called Someone on the Inside. It requires you to lower a bridge in the Candle District, and once you've done this quest and turned it in, the Malmoth Resistance reputation should be added to your faction list. If you have gotten this far, you should be like level 40 plus, probably a little bit deeper into 40 if you're newer and doing a lot of exploring, and you should have all your factions unlocked. That's the main goal here. This is the earliest point at which I would go to Elite as a newer player, although I would suggest doing an all-content run-through at least one time on normal difficulty. Kind of blind, you know? So when do you go to Ultimate Difficulty? Level 70 to level 75 is a good rule of thumb here, as a minimum. Level 70 allows for the use of high-end augments, permitted you have faction rep to purchase them, and level 75 would allow the use of high-end components if you happen to have the recipes for these items. In summation, get to Steel Cap District before Elite, get to 75 plus before Ultimate. Question number six, I'm looking for item ABC or this item XYZ, where can I find it, where does it drop? This is such a common question. Let's briefly go through the item rules of thumb in Grim Dawn with help from GrimTools.com because GrimTools tells you everything you need to know. 90% totally made that number up, but most items in the game are totally random drops. You will see on GrimTools.com on the bottom right, it says Forgotten Gods or it might say the expansion pack. This does not mean it drops in areas associated with that expansion. It simply means it was introduced as part of that content, but can still drop anywhere permitted you have that expansion pack. Next up, there are some items that can drop from urns or vases, and in most cases, vase-specific or urn-specific drops are 100% drop chance. They also tend to have three item variants spanning all difficulties, such as the Fetten Mask, which is found in the secret area in Forgotten Gods. I use this as an example because it's a great starter headpiece for all classes if you want to go pick this item up. Next up, we have chest-specific drops. The Vanquisher set is a very common chest drop people go for. This has a chance to drop from Skeldic Key Dungeon loot rooms, and is not a 100% drop chance, so these need to be farmed over and over to get them to drop. Next up, we have monster and frequent items. This is a broad category I'll touch on a little bit later as well, but a monster and frequent, or MI as we call them, literally just means a specific monster can be farmed to obtain it. They come in all rarities, they can drop from bosses or trash mobs, their drop chances vary from extremely low all the way up to 100% drop chance, and GrimTools.com will tell you where and who drops these items in most cases. Crafted items next. Most recipes in Grim Dawn are also random drops. There is a very short list of MI recipes that drop in Grim Dawn, and there are actually quite a few that can be obtained from factions. Here's an example of what it looks like on Grim Tools. Uh, you'll have the faction name and the recipe name at the bottom, and that's it. That's how you know it comes from a faction. So in summation, when in doubt, GrimTools.com it out and do some research. Question number seven, what is a double rare and triple rare? Why is this more complicated than I thought it was going to be? Items in Grim Dawn, aside from legendaries and epics, are structured pretty basic. You have a base item, which can drop with a prefix and a suffix. There is a list of magic and rare affixes in the game. These can be viewed on GrimTools.com. Rare ones being the better quality of the two, generally speaking. So if a random base item drops with a rare prefix and a rare suffix, you've got yourself a double rare. Now a triple rare is the same thing, except the item base is a monster infrequent rare, plus a rare prefix, prefix and rare suffix. I have done so many takes on this, I'm leaving it. Monster infrequent rare items have base stats baked into them. This can result in very powerful items with a ton of stats on them. Some would argue these in some cases are better than legendary items, but they're extremely uncommon and hard to find. You can also craft double rare items. I uh, will use uh, Stone Plague Greaves as an example here. You would think these are just crappy yellow craftable boots, but when crafted, they will roll with two affixes. You can basically craft a juiced up double rare permitted you have enough materials to do so. This is a pretty common tactic amongst uh, Grim Dawn players for sure. You might also ask if you can do this with crafted green items. However, items that are already green in rarity at the blacksmith can only roll a single affix, not two of them. So the game sort of baits you a little bit here. It doesn't mean items are bad, it's just something to be aware of. So in summation, 
when in doubt, download Rainbow Filter out. Uh, we're going to talk about that next. Question number eight. Are there any good mods or tools to get for Grim Dawn starting out? So you may have noticed when I was showcasing triple rare and double rare items, I was able to tell which was which just from the in-game colors on the items. This is a tool called Rainbow Filter. I'll leave a link to it below. There's a good forum write-up for this, but with this, you can identify the rarity of the affixes. You can tell if an item is an MI base or just a white item base. You can even tell if it's a legendary MI just by its drop color. I think it usually drops as pink. A very nice tool no matter who you are. Next up, we have Grimdon Item Assistant, another good tool. This is a third-party application that runs behind Grimdon. It's basically a cloud storage for items, probably the simplest way to describe it. You won't need this starting out, but if you decide to play Grimdon extensively, this will give you infinite storage and easier way to find your items. It is the best way to avoid muling in this game. Lastly, we have Grim Internals. This is definitely a cool tool, but you don't need it to play the game anymore. This brought things like enemy health bars and loot filters to the game prior to them being baked into the vanilla game. For a while, it was almost required to have this for quality of life, but since patch 1.1.4, the need for this quality of life sort of went away. The tool does have other things like DPS meters, more auto loot options, and some sort of cheaty things like custom waypoints and such in it that I'm not a huge fan of, but I will leave a link to this tool below as well. Question number nine. Does Grim Dawn have Endgame? Yes, sort of. I'll leave a link to my dedicated Does Grim Dawn have Endgame video somewhere here. Uh, but in short, at level 100, you have super bosses, secret bosses, Skell the Key roguelike dungeons. There are five of them in total. Shattered Realm, which is like a Diablo 3 Rift system, sort of a never ending dungeon. You have the Crucible DLC if you own it. Then you have the biggest Endgame boss of them all, which is literally just making more characters. Grim Dawn offers nine base classes with 36 unique class combinations with God knows how many builds and thousands of items. The possibilities are pretty much endless. Grim Dawn does not offer ladder play as part of the vanilla game. However, I am actually the host of the Grim Dawn community ladders. Uh, we are currently running Grim Dawn seasons with the help from some modders and programmers. So if you're interested in some competitive ladder play, you can join my Discord down below for updates. It's becoming my sort of main focus these days. Season three should happen later this year. Uh, and our last season actually had over 400 signups, two ladders, a bunch of prizes. It was a ton of fun. So check that out if you're interested. Number 10, what is the best build or class in the game? There really isn't a best build because Grim Dawn isn't competitive to a point where a meta build could be defined. There are too many litmus tests people use in Grim Dawn, such as Crucible Clear Speed, SR Level Pushing, Boss Kill Speed, Super Boss Kill Capability, and more to measure how strong their builds are. However, you are looking at the Templar using the Vanquisher set right now at 1.0 times speed. This is the vanilla speed. I will leave a link to this build guide um, by Mystery Meat below. If I needed to pick a build to play forever, this would probably be it. All of the main items that make this build work are target farmable, making it somewhat beginner friendly. From point A to point B, it's the fastest build in the game. The DPS is pretty good. It's not the best, but it's pretty good. It's capable of killing every boss in the game, and it's fun as hell to play. Sometimes this build feels a little bit out of place in Grim Dawn, which makes it sort of silly due to its speed. All right, so that concludes the 10 most common questions, but we're going to just do a quick bonus round. I'm level 100. How do I get loot? First, you want to do totem farms. You won't get many legendary recipes from this, but they're very simple. Just Google totem farms. There's tons of guides out there. Next up, you can do Skeletiki dungeons. These are a very well-rounded way of getting loot. And then after that, Shattered Realm. I would say Shattered Realm Elite tier 60 to 61. If you can speed farm it, do that. You will literally get everything from SR and, and, then, and then some. So check that out. I will leave a link to my SR spreadsheet uh, down below somewhere you can, so you can figure out how much loot you can farm. Next up, number two. I'm level 100 and I want to do some content, but I keep dying. What should my stats look like? This is a loaded question, and it depends, but 2.8 thousand defensive ability, 2.8 thousand offensive ability, at least capped in every resistance, if not over capped. No less than 13,000 HP are all good places to start. Also, physical resistance and armor plus armor absorption are very important, but those numbers are going to vary widely. It's hard to make a rule of thumb, but do not ignore those stats. Number three, is it beneficial to play veteran difficulty? No, loot isn't better and XP increase is small, but if you want to play Grim Dawn only once and one playthrough and you want a challenge, then go for it, but generally speaking, it will slow you down. Number four, is there a multiplayer in Grim Dawn? Yes, but it's peer-to-peer. -peer. There are no dedicated servers. It's just fine for playing with a friend, but random games could be hit or miss. Number five, in the video settings, what is this deferred rendering thing? Should I check it off? 
Yes, it will offer better performance, but only offers FXAA anti-aliasing, which some don't like, so know that. Number six, I am using deferred rendering, but everything is too glowy and now I'm having seizures. Why is this happening? Set particles to high in lieu of very high and the glow effect will go away. Number seven, where is the Xbox release of this game? It is done, but stuck in some Microsoft licensing store garbage limbo that I don't understand. I think it's out of crate's hands. Number eight, this is not a question, but if you just installed the game, make sure to check off auto loot materials. This will be disabled by default to force new players to read crap on the ground, but turn it on to save your wrists. Number nine, on the same subject, you can bind a key to pick up items so you can spam a button instead of clicking. This is helpful. Use it. Number 10, you do not need to drop a portal to teleport. Just open your map, press local map, and teleport wherever the fuck you want. Number 11, will there be more Grim Dawn updates? To my understanding, there will not be any large content patches, just balancing hotfixes and tweaks. The devs are still pretty involved, but they're just not making new stuff. Number 13, will there be Grim Dawn 2? Eventually, but it's not in development. Craig is currently working on other projects slated for release this year, but it's not an action RPG, but Grim Dawn 2 should be on the horizon eventually. Holy moly. Ugh. We did it.